But it's an unusual story. It's a one of a kind. Uh, there is no question of it. Uh, the actions toward the customer. If a customer walks in the door, you must give his order immediately. If not, sometimes I push him back out to read the menu on the outside. If it's too cold, I let him stand there, but I force him to talk. I grab him by the arm and throw him up to the counter, wherever there's a free man open. I say now that I don't know what percentage anymore is gimmick or my own neurosis as far as having a customer wait on immediately yeah. or uh, neurotic situation. I, there's no question about it. Thank you, 15, you got it? No, you haven't. Here you are, sir. Thank you. Yes, please. That's the way to go. Come on with me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's the way to go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Follow me down, sir. Come on, J.C., I'll find somebody else. Call me about Ryan, no mustard. December of uh, 41, just before war broke out, and then as a private, uh, had four years overseas, three and a half years were combat times, the second longest in the entire army. I came out with a Purple Heart and a Bronze Star, uh, became a captain at the end of the war. furniture on the road for two and a half years and then I bought into a partnership on St. Clair in Ohio in 48. Uh, didn't have any money so two guys put up money. One had a half of me for about three years and I took half of what I made. I was working 15 hours a day, seven days a week. Finally got rid of him about three years later. He didn't want out. sticking a knife into Freddy's arm, one of those big knives. It stuck right in there. He had to have stitches in the thing. And uh, these, uh, these guys here have all been with me anywhere from, oh, I will say 10 to 22 years. One man's been with me for 27 years. Uh, this, uh, they're quite a bunch of guys. If they can take my uh, guff, it's quite something. Where you going? There he is. Yes, ma'am, you're mine. What I'd rather have you. Here she is, Annie. Where I try to analyze why these customers come in and take my grabbing them and take my forcing them to give orders. And it's always been a case where I said, maybe they're masochists. And I realized that 90% of the people can't be masochists, so it must be something else. And I've analyzed to the point where they're very humanized when they walk in here, whereas where they work, they are just number four or five. They're nobodies. And they come in here by my grabbing them and touching them and screaming at them, they become human beings. I think this is the secret of the thing. And it's a fact that I I feel that uh, close to people. I like people. You, sir. Sir, are you way down? I would change for a dollar. He's getting right here. The man's trying to help you. There he is, change for a dollar. I'll move him around. What else? What else? Uh, sure, my actions have caused uh, many little situations in this store. Uh, some, in a few cases, have tried to hit me. 
and I ducked in time because they didn't know me. Uh, then the other people that were here would explain me to them, uh, which of course, as the years go on, most of these people I even know by name after 26 years in this neighborhood. I don't care how big he is. What do you have, sir? Go! <laughs> Freddie first died with me about 90 years ago. After a year or so, by that time he was in the back room. I didn't have a black man actually making the sandwiches. Uh, I wanted him to wait on trade, but I was scared I would lose my customers. So I told Fred I would put up crackers in front of him, boxes of crackers in front of him, so they wouldn't see his hands, to show how ridiculous it is. This is supposedly a man with ideals. And then I went home that night and uh, came back the next day and I walked up to Fred and I said, how the hell did you feel about this uh, yesterday, this work? He's, I felt like hell. And I said, I did too. I had talked to my wife about it. My wife said, you know, Jerry, you talk a big game about ideals. When it comes down to it, you don't put your money where your mouth is. So I said, I might lose a lot of customers. She said, that's your gamble. But you talk the big game, do something about it. And so we threw away the crackers and the beautiful part of it is within two, three months, the customers were asking Freddie to wait on him because he was the nicest guy in the store, uh, far nicer than I could ever be. Come in now, William Van Top. Are you ready, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, so is he. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, right down there. Yes, sir, right in there behind this guy here. Right behind this man here. Sir, right behind this man here. You're mine. Come on. Oh, yes, I'm you. Right here.